Bestbookbits.com brings you the book summary of Start Finishing, How to Go From Idea to Done by Charlie Gilkey. A prominent productivity expert shows how to do more of the work that matters by converting ideas into finished products. Though we've created more productivity tools and strategies than ever, many people are frustrated that they're not making progress on what's most important to them. We're to-do list ninjas, knocking off task after task, but doing less of what really matters. With Start Finishing, Gilkey presents a systematic root cause approach for overcoming the real pitfalls to productivity and turning your ideas into finished projects. He outlines a powerful seven-step method for success, including identifying your genius, building a success pack of supporters, navigating multiple projects, and using each completed step to create momentum that propels you towards your larger goals. With deep insight and clarity and contribution from Seth Godin, Susan Pipper, Jonathan Fields, and more, Gilkey provides an invaluable set of tools to help you stop being bogged down with task list and start finishing your best work. Clearing the decks for your best work. Someday can be today. People love to share their ideas, but more often than not, they never act upon them. The reality is we don't do ideas, we do projects. A project is anything that requires time, energy, and attention to complete. But why should we make our ideas a reality through projects? Sages from Aristotle to the Dalai Lama have asserted that the goal of human action is to thrive, and we thrive by doing our best work. Your best work could be raising your kids, a side business, or starting a full-time business, working with a non-profit volunteer at your church, coaching Little League, or mentoring teenagers. It could even be a hobby. Your best work makes the world and your life more meaningful. And we can create new realities for ourselves today. Get into your best work. Imagine your life as if there were two slices of bread. Your vision, mission, purpose, and big goals compose the top slice of bread. Your day-to-day reality is the bottom slice of bread. For many people, there's a big gap between the two, leading to an air sandwich. The air in the sandwich is filled by five challenges that keep you from doing your best work. Number one, competing priorities. Action expresses priority. Number two, head trash. General aspirations, self-limiting stories, and personal experiences, histories, and contexts, usually rooted in our childhood. Number three, no realistic plan, self-explanatory. Number four, too few resources. Do what you can with what you got, where you are. And five, poor team alignment. We're not communicating to our team what we want, need, and dream to be. There are five keys to doing your best work. Number one, intention. Start with why. Begin with the end in mind and consider where you want your life to be in three years. Number two, awareness. Know what your best work is and notice how your emotions and presence shift when you're doing your best work. Number three, boundaries. Positive boundaries are creating space for something and negative boundaries are creating space from something. Number four is courage. Courageous action can build talent, but fear keeps us stuck in our confines of yesterday. And five, discipline. It channels our energy into purposeful, constructive action, while a lack of discipline diffuses our energy into destructive outlets. The five keys are practices that can be cultivated, and we're often well cultivated in some, but not in others. Pick an idea that matters to you. It's time to embrace the thrashing you're doing. The more something matters to you, the more you'll thrash, precisely because its success or failure is deeply important to you. However, not doing your best work leads to creative constipation. At a certain point, you'll be too toxic to take new ideas in because you're not getting them out. Don't be discouraged, though. First of all, we are made to slay dragons. We have survived for hundreds of thousands of years using our creativity, grit, imagination, and cooperative spirit. Secondly, we're resilient, adaptable, ingenious, and triumphant. Dragons aren't a signal that we're on the wrong road, but rather that we're on the right road. Finally, the gift of failure is that it reveals what matters to you, shows you when you're out of alignment, and reveals a growth edge. Simply let go of projects and ideas that aren't allowing you to thrive, so you can trade up to the projects that do. This is what the author calls displacement, the fact that doing something now excludes doing anything else. It can help you focus on what matters, but only after you accept the limitations of time and energy. Planning your project, convert your idea into a project. Now that you've chosen an idea that matters, you're much closer to doing your best work. Consider the following two formulations of the same goal. Book. 
complete a book on history of cappuccino by the end of 2019. Which of the two are more likely to get done? Probably the second one, because it's now a SMART goal. A SMART goal is simple, meaningful, actionable, realistic, and trackable. Now let's talk about the different types of success. Consider the fuzzy goal of running a marathon. Finishing the marathon, which could include walking parts of it and finishing before the event ends, could be classified as a small success. A moderate success might be running the whole way. An epic success might be winning your category. The three levels of success, small, moderate, and epic, require a corresponding amount of effort and focus, and you can't do everything at the epic level. Remember, what other people achieve is irrelevant to where you are and what level of success makes the most sense for you. Finally, if a project doesn't have a start and a completion date, it's not likely that it's going to get done. Consider, we should hang out soon versus would you like to get drinks Friday evening? The gift of dating items is that it helps us get real with displacement, and displacement channels our energy and attention. Make space for your project. To start doing your best work, create space for a specific project and build from there. Chunking, splitting projects into coherent, doable parts. Linking, joining chunks together so they can hang together. And sequencing, linking chunks together in a logical order in space and time are the key skills that will help you create space and build plans that work. A chunk of work that can be done in 15 minutes is a task, and a chunk that can be done in two hours is a block. Try it. Think about an item on a to-do list. Does it seem like it's going to be a 15-minute task, or two, or a two-hour block? When we articulate chunks as verb noun constructs, we see that the verb gives us an idea of the size of the work. Here are some conventional verbs, as well as what size of a chunk they relate to. One, quarter or mouse size project verbs rework develop strategize launch ship build publish books articles kick off move relocate number two weak size project verbs research decide on collaborate with create plan design analyze slash evaluate coordinate promote edit apply number three task verbs for work that can be done in 15 minutes email call sort read send check review find compile schedule make text print these verbs help us better understand how projects are chunked linked and sequenced and how some chunks will naturally go with others while some chunks go in others mastering quarter sized projects is the secret source of doing your best work The author's five project rule is shorthand for no more than five active projects per time scale and helps prioritize and plan projects. The weekly perspective is the longest level of perspective that people feel comfortable shaping and planning. At the weekly perspective, there are four basic blocks that we can build into our days. Number one, focus blocks. 90 to 120 minutes blocks of time when we're especially creative, inspired, and able to do high-level work that requires focus. Number two, social blocks. 90 to 120 minute blocks of time when we're primed and energetically in the right space to meet and other people. Number three, admin blocks. 30 to 60 minutes lower energy blocks of time when we're not in the zone to do the work that requires heavy lifting, but there are still other types of work we can do effectively. And number four, recovery blocks. Variable length blocks of time that we can use for activities that recharge us, such as exercise, meditation, self-care, and intentional idling. Three focus blocks per week per best work project helps you maintain momentum, efficiency, and focus. Now you know you're not going to find time somewhere for your best work. You have to make the time for your best work. When you use the five projects rule and weekly block planning, you end up with defaults and constraints that aid your planning and prioritization. Build your project roadmap. A project roadmap is a project plan that places chunks of a project on a timeline. Playing to your strengths makes the project easy to do, and you'll find flow more often than when you're using your strengths. Build projects from your gates. Genius, affinities, talents, expertise, and strengths. Then create a budget for your project to avoid snags and stall outs. Even when a project doesn't require money, Funding a project can make it better. 
Use deadlines to guide your project, but remember that it's your capacity that drives your project no matter what the deadline is. Finally, when you're working with collaborators and almost all best work projects have collaborators, make sure to build relay time into your roadmap. As you work through building your roadmap, write in pencil and embrace the mistakes you're going to make. Keep flying by accounting for drag points. Drag points are the natural places where reality will push against your plans. For example, we often choose mediocrity in short term because we don't want to succeed due to non-win scenarios. The success will wreck my relationship tale, the success versus virtue myth, and the what if I can't do it again trap, but we also don't want to fail. Mediocrity is a space between success and failure. Or we let derailers and naysayers drag us down. Derailers are the well many people whose help and feedback throw you off course, and the naysayers are the people who are actively against you and your project. To identify and avoid the challenges that may kill or slow your projects, use Project Premortems, the process of considering all the ways that a project might go south, so you can actively work to prevent those things. Use the following questions to do your Project Promortem. Have you created any no-win scenarios for yourself? How might you detangle them? Have you picked a method of doing your project that's especially hard for you? How might you start from and leverage your gates? Are there any derailers or real naysayers you need to account for? List them by name and how you address them. Are you carrying any projects that you can let go of to keep them from bogging you down? Are there any bad or unhelpful stories you're telling yourself? You're a flake, you're not good at planning. Who are you to think you can do it and others? And what will you do to counteract those stories. Before we jump into the next chapter, if you want to download this PDF summary, pop your email in the link below and I'll send it straight to you. Back with the summary. Work in your plan. Weave your project into your schedule. Make sure your environment helps you work focused on your projects. The seven environmental factors to make work for you are sound, smell, sunlight, clothing, clutter slash organization, amount of space, and music. Batching and stacking are strategies that help you work more effectively. Batching work is the process of doing similar kinds of work in a contagious stretch of time. Stacking work is the process of doing dissimilar but compatible kinds of work in the same stretch of time. A few easy examples of task stacking are doing laundry while listening to an audiobook, doing an audio or real-time meeting while hiking, exercising in the park while spending time with the kids. Frogs are the tasks and chunks of the projects that we really don't want to do, e.g. paying a bill even though we have the money to pay, or responding to an email that might take three minutes to do so, if we just make up our mind and do it. Addressing them more frequently helps keep the dread to work ratio low. For more productive output, put the work that requires the most effort, decisions, analysis, and evaluation, and deep work on the days when you have the most creative, positive energy. Those days should also have the most focus blocks. In terms of planning, here's what tends to work well for people. Number one, daily planning. The night before or the first thing in the morning before checking email, this can typically be done in less than 15 minutes. Two, weekly planning. Sunday night or first thing Monday morning before checking email, this can typically be done in less than 30 minutes. Monthly planning. The weekend before the month starts on the or the first Monday of the month. This requires a focus block if you haven't been doing your weekly momentum planning. Number four, Quarterly planning, the week before the quarter starts. Quarterly planning often takes multiple passes if you haven't been doing your monthly momentum planning. And number five, annual planning. The month before the year starts, annual planning may take multiple passes. Build daily momentum. Celebrating the small wins of progress enables us to create big finishes. To boost daily momentum, create habits and routines that minimize decision fatigue and create longer periods of flow. Leaving crumb trails for projects, e.g. leaving a quick note to yourself about where to pick up, makes getting back into projects more enjoyable and efficient. Interruptions are external diversions that keep us from doing our best work. Distractions are internal diversions that allow ourselves to do. Minimize them to build momentum. Other ways that can sabotage your momentum are project cascades. When a project's falling behind makes others fall behind. Project log jams, when you have too many concurrent projects, and tar pits, when a stuck project gets more stuck the longer it stays stuck. Make sure you're aware of them and deal with them swiftly. 
the creative red zone is the last stretch of the project where the closer you get to the finishing line, the harder it is to cross the finish line. To get through it, return often to the why of the project. And last, finish strong. Finishing a best work project unlocks new realities. After action reviews make every project a learning experience at the same time that they set you up for greater success in future projects. The more a project matters to you, the greater the need for downtime and transition time after finishing it. Give yourself cat, clean up, archive and trash. Time to make the next project easier to do. Conclusion, key takeaways. We thrive by doing our best work. The more something matters to you, the more you'll thrash, precisely because its success or failure is deeply important to you. You have to let go of projects and ideas that aren't allowing you to thrive so you can trade up to the projects that do. Projects without starting completion dates are unlikely to get done. Create space for your best work and build from there. Three focus blocks per week per best work project helps you maintain momentum, efficiency and focus. Project pre-mortems help identify and avoid the challenges that may kill or slow your project. After action reviews make every project a learning experience. At the same time, they set you up for greater success in future projects. And that's wrapping the book summary of Start Finishing. But before you go away, if you want to support Best Book Bits, the way to do it is to smash that like button, share with your friends, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the notification bell for updates, and other ways you can support us is getting a copy of my new book, Success in 50 Steps, where I distill 500 book summaries down into one book, the ultimate personal development book to take your dreams out of your head into reality. You can hire me for coaching and mentoring. Click the link below. You can also download our top 150 summaries in PDF format with over 2,500 pages. You can also download my course, 28 Steps to Living Your Dream Life. And where do we follow us? Check us out, bestbookbits.com, the home of the world's largest free book summary website. You can find me on Instagram, DM me up for a chat. And if you want me to do a book summary, let me know through Instagram. Follow us on Spotify. All our audio summaries are done first on Spotify and second on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at Best Book Bits and join our free book club there where we talk about books. And you can also get updated with the latest book summaries via email with our mailing list. And we also on Patreon. So if you're cashed up and have lots and lots of money and want to give Best Book Bits some, this is where you can donate to the world's largest free book summary website in video, written, and audio format. Thanks for watching and listening. Hope you have an amazing day. Go out there and start finishing your projects. Take care. Bye-bye now.